All right, what's up going on, man? Today we had a yeah, great episode. This was uh, a good one. Uh, gotta admit, man, you know, asking you and Wes uh, some of the questions we asked, you know, put me in a, you know, I mean, because I know it's not easy for you guys sometimes, so I just want to make sure I kind of. You know, I feel because uh, this group we have here, you, Joe, Wesley, obviously, um, are all my friends outside of this too. Right. So it's it's like uh, just kind of having a talk, like hanging you know out. I mean? like, yeah, it didn't feel I didn't yeah. feel weird. It didn't feel like I was um, giving part of myself away. You know, personally, uh, to someone I don't know. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it was just like chatting around a, a, a beer. Really. Yeah, and it was one of those light episodes that we had where it wasn't uh, wasn't you know. I like that. You know I did. I, mean? I liked it. We got to kind of riff a little bit too on the side. It was cool. Yeah, and that that's something we're getting better at. I think. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Well, without further ado, hit the music. Let's roll it. When a new enemy attacked America on the morning of September 11th, 2001, they had unknowingly awoken a sleeping giant. From all over the nation, men and women left their family and friends, their lives and their home, and answered the call to arms. They came from north, south, east, and west. They became soldiers, marines, sailors, airmen, and coast guardsmen. As of today, hundreds of thousands of Americans have served for what is now their nation's longest war. More and more of them are returning home, fighting new and personal wars on many different fronts. But they are not alone, and they are not forgotten. Their battles are our battles. And while they fight these battles, we we are are their their overwatch. overwatch. Everybody, fall in. Welcome to Overwatch. We're doing a slow hey, run. No music today. I wanted to try it. <laughs> I wanted to try it. Aww. And, and we're I, I wanted to see if I could like. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could wing it like that. All right. So what's up, everybody? Welcome to join. Welcome back to uh, Overwatch. Glad you can join us. We are here. We are live. We got uh, Joe right here. We got Evan next to me. We got our brother Wesley. Who, uh, by the way, we just got to put out some good news. Why don't you go ahead and tell us the good news, man? About the yeah, share thing. it with the world. Oh. uh... Well, no, I, I got, I'm getting the opportunity to go try out for the U.S. National Sled Hockey Team, so uh, July 5th to... Do, now, I didn't know they had cheerleaders. <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And, uh, gonna melt, you're going to melt the, the ice the with those right fiery there, burns. <laughs> <laughs> so right on, man. Congrats, brother. How does that feel? Uh, it feels good. It's a little intimidating because uh, I get to go try out for a position I never played before, but uh, I'm ready for it. I think, uh, I'll, I think I'm ready to... Go show what I got. How many uh, is that? Does that have anything to do with the Paralympic team? Or how yes, is that, is that what it is? Right yes, on. it is. Um, so this is the, for the this is for the team that, that gets ready for the Paralympic team. So uh, in three years, when they go to the Paralympics, uh, this is the team they're getting ready to for the team that's going to go represent in three years. Right on. Well, so if you make this team. You'll be on the Paralympic team? No, or? not necessarily. It, okay. It's just an opportunity. Um, the development team, and then the de- develop, development team would be the first place that they go and pick from when they're choosing the team. So the yeah. development team is like making selection, I guess, and then you have to, you know, make it past that. Or gotcha. Kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. right so on, you man. Get, get on the team and then prove yourself on the team too. Yeah. But it's a big step. I mean, there's a lot of people that play sled, sled hockey. Is one of the more popular um, sports for disabled athletes and so there's a big pool to pick from which means that he obviously you know stands out in the crowd of, of that one it's not like like i know with triathlons or something there's a smaller group of people to choose from so making the team is a little easier but what he has to do means he's really standing out in the crowd um with a lot of yeah athletes I, in that sport i believe last year for the they had a, a pool of like 60 or 70 players to pick from for the paralympics last year Really? So, and out of that, uh, they picked around 18 or 19 players, so. Yeah, so. How many players kinda, are on a rink? That's a good question. I don't, or, or on a, uh, out on the ice at one time. Oh, on the ice, it's uh, five plus the goalie, so. But there's like, what, 15 that's people six. on the team, right? So, just hmm? so you know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I, I, I I know how to add you. <laughs> such a dick. No, God, damn. No, that's good, man. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm feeling really, kind of froggy today. Yeah, I, I picked up on that. <laughs> 
You told me on Saturday, and I was like stoked for him, man. I know it's like yeah, it's exciting. Like, he to- wants me to start taking him into the gym and uh, working out his, uh, you know, getting all his muscles in shape and everything. So now, well, yeah, the well Evan, Evan's a freaking beast. I don't have know, you ever you, seen him work out? I have not. I, but I've been in the gym when he works out, and he makes me look. He makes me just feel bad. Yeah, I, I've seen him go so. up like. I, I, stairs, I purposefully is, select mm-hmm. select movements that will make everyone else in the gym look bad, and I purposely yeah. go to the gym with all the old people and the and the and the uh, oh, soccer moms. Oh, he just called you old, Joe. I, I'll, I'll, yeah, no, I, Joe, I'll support Joe's him on def- that. He goes to the uh, ladies. It's like yeah, the ladies it's fitness literally spa. Half the, yeah, they call it the fitness yeah. spa. So yeah, it's nice fit- though. You're talking about the one over there on Brimhall. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that one's nice. Yeah, it is nice because there's nobody in there. Yeah, that's why I like it so much. Yeah. But, but yeah. So we're gonna, so we're gonna for develop, all those non-Bakersfield listeners, we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to develop a montage for a uh, Yeah, we're going to do a training train. video. Because we'll, you need a montage. Oh, yeah. You ever see that Park episode? A <laughs> lot of things happening fast. <laughs> montage. Hey, you know, one of the, the, one of the best... Showing uh, improvement <laughs> over time. <laughs> Here's to you, Mr. Sled Hockey Man. Yeah. Show them all sliding on the ice. <laughs> yeah, but I'll give you the same advice my dad gave me as I was playing sports all those years. If you can't be an athlete, you can always be an athletic supporter. So think about that. That's what I am right now. I'm a big Dodger. <laughs> you can supporter. always be a gym coach. <laughs> well, right on, bro. Yeah, it gets yeah, exciting. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I got a lot of hard work ahead of me, but I'm, I'm ready to prove it. Yeah, dude, that's cool. Good timing for you, too, huh? Yeah. Jumping right into something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, speaking of sports, too, man, Le- LeBron James lost last night. And, 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 no, but the reason, I, the, the, the reason I say that is because I feel bad because the Golden State Warriors won – and by the time this airs, this will be like two weeks later. But, um, but you know, the Golden State Warriors win the title, and all you hear about the next day is LeBron James. And I think that says a lot about our society. I think it sucks, you know what I mean? Because those guys, but I mean, think all them guys were at one time like you. I mean, you know, had dreams to go to the NBA and try hard. And it's like all they care about is that but, dude. But all you hear about, uh, uh, you know, the, the organizations you hear about doing those kind of things are like, the major networks, the sport networks like uh, ESPN, mainly ESPN, which they have a love affair with LeBron James and people that bring yeah. money. So, but I heard he was the best basketball player in the world. No, nah, he he said that himself. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I he really, yeah, he said that himself. <laughs> and then the next day, he lost the title. Like that's ludicrous. <laughs> He's also the same guy that got a heat cramp and was carried off by like three uh, medical staff. Yeah, I heard team. about that on like viral media and all that kind of stuff, but I never I don't watch basketball, so I didn't see the yeah, I, mean, I didn't know if it, I, sometimes you don't know if you're getting the full story or, or you know what I mean like I see one of those things pop up on Facebook like the LeBron memes. James gets heat cramps has to be carried off the court by five people uh, you know and then it shows a picture of like a Dallas star the, player, the dude, yeah. or like that gunny sergeant who got shot and like is flipping off the camera or something. Yeah, like, yeah. and they'll be like, yeah. you know, keeps on fighting after shot in the neck or something yeah. like that. So, so I never know how how biased or unbiased those things are. Yeah, you had you had a. Did also, it happen? I mean, what, in, this, in the same week when he got uh, that, or same time frame when he got uh, got carried out, you had the uh, Dallas Heat, uh, the Dallas Heat, Dallas star player, uh, hockey player. He died on the ice. And was revived on the ice and asked to go back on the ice to play. That's hockey. Oh, the guy that got cut, the guy that got cut by the skate or something. No, he like had a like a heart attack or something happened on him. Life just ended. Yeah, he to St. Peter and was like, "No, go back." He literally died on the ice (laughs) and got revived on the ice. I'm not ready to die yet, eh? I need to go back and play the game. (laughs) That's good stuff, though, man. Next shift. (laughs) But a lot of people who listen to the show may or may not know that um, both you guys. Our double amputees, right? And uh, we've been talking about, you know, bringing you guys in, just kind of talking about, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about in regards to it. But the cool thing about you doing this hockey thing, a lot of people might not know, is that, you know, you are a double amputee and you're making this happen. So that's, I mean, that in itself is, I mean, just fucking amazing, dude. <clears throat> so, I mean, you're out there, you, you know, killing it. You've been doing it for a while since I've met you, you know, about a little, almost, almost a year now. Yeah, you've yeah, been he's doing been it. Doing that for a while, you know, and, and Wesley, yeah. I mean, uh, Evan's just, I mean, a beast. I never, I mean, I've never had the, the <clears throat> patience to stick with anything very long, though. That's why I, I always appreciate what Wesley does. Same thing, like with with walking on, on prosthetics, that I don't do anymore. Um, but uh, so yeah, no, I, I jump around from thing to thing. But it's been it's been great watching Wesley uh, on this one sport. I know I, I did some sports for a little while, and it was a great tool. I'm sure you'll agree. Like, yeah, and and we've both done like the hand cycling and things. I mean, heck, you. We're on the ride across America deal. Yeah, Wesley, you want you rode you now. From, I don't know. This is before I got I got back. So you rode a hand cycle from here to the East Coast. Uh, well, Memphis. That's when I blew okay. out my shoulder. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, From Baker to Memphis. Bills. Maybe it was Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, but that's cool. You got. I mean, you got. You guys are. I mean, you guys seriously are two of the like the strongest guys I know physically. Yet, you know, you know, you you have your injuries, and I think that's amazing, man. And that's that's a compliment. I think you know? probably it puts it in perspective for us. I mean, yeah, like. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do in sports um, and, and feel almost equal when we're mm-hmm. doing them. But then there's some simple things like around the house that still, no matter how good we are at Mopping. being in a wheelchair, yeah, like wheelchair or using prosthetics, the simplest things you'll fall on your ass doing or like you just can't, you know, you go to uh, push a trash can up and you end up I know, being in a wheelchair. I, I figured it out, but I mean, you, you know, you go to push something light and you just push yourself the other way because your wheelchair is you know so right. so nice and, yeah. and rolls easily and then your wife comes up and goes to push the you know push that thing just because she has feet and she can plant you know and just right. kind of push it the other way so i think sports a lot of times um for people in our situation are like an equalizer and uh definitely a confidence booster so yeah i mean you guys definitely use it to your advantage i mean i i actually have seen him at the gym i was leaving action sports which is next door to the gym and i saw you through the window and i think i texted you that day it was a while back i was like what's up man see you at the gym and you text back like an hour later, but like I saw you getting it, man. I was like, Damn, he does dude. those handstand push-ups to show off. Yeah, that, <laughs> I do. That yeah, low center of gravity. No, I, 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 uh, I use it to my advantage sometimes. Yeah, doing things like uh, I don't weigh, I don't have as much leg to lift up, you know. So yeah, you can do handstand pull-ups or weighted weighted pull-ups with the the weight belt and stuff like that. But I, I enjoy it. It's it's fun fun for me. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, I mean, t- how's that journey worked out for you as far as... Yeah, it, well, I started doing... I, w- I wasn't really into sports. I, I'll, the, my main concentration when I was recovering was uh, uh, just I wanted to run. That was what I wanted to focus right, yeah. on. Like the big thing, but like kind of before before you um, retired officially? Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, want, I want to be able to run again. Where did you go through? Did you go, you uh, went through I went to Walter, Walter Reed. Reed. Yeah. Yes, the old Walter Reed, the, the old school stuff. <laughs> That's closed so the, down now, right? They officially yeah, did they that. Did, they closed back it down. when it was hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did Walter Reed back when it was hard. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, yeah. So I went through there, and, and I didn't really get into sports until uh, I separated from my ex-wife, and uh, you know I was you know not doing good, and uh, I looked around and uh, I started uh, doing stuff here and there, swimming a lot. And then I got the opportunity. Uh, I was asked if I wanted to do this bike across the country. And I was like, for a good cause, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll destroy my body. I'll die for a good cause. And uh, figured out the cause. And I said, okay, I'll do that for that. And uh, the, the cause was, uh, you know, uh, the suicide. Uh, right, the veteran, veteran suicide. suicide. For me, you know, that was that was my main reason. You got to pick it? Was it something you got to pick? Uh, or was it well, already it's something that I wanted to do it for. So I, right. that's something I wanted to bring awareness to. Uh, haven't lost a few friends to that right. stupid crap, but yeah. So that's why I started getting into sports, and uh, then I came back, and I was even though I had a blown out shoulder, I was still in great shape, and uh, it took about six months to recover from that shoulder. And when I came back, I was asked to come back to the ice rink and check it out, uh, do uh, sled hockey. And I was like, I did it once; it was fun, but I wasn't really uh, into it. Right. And I came out, man, and, and I fell in love with the sport. Running around, having, you know, 220-pound guys just flying by you, getting people knocked out. I mean, I was just like, yes. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. And uh, I, I, fell in love, I fell in love with the sport. There's no, no ifs or buts about it. How often are you out there, like on the ice or, or doing something with it? Normally, uh, once or twice a week. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, on, on average, about twice a week. Um, this from now till I leave, I'm basically gonna live out of there. So <laughs> yeah, but yeah. How yeah. long is that? Like, because I know you told me, but I, I forgot. I'm going uh, twice a day. No, until you leave. It, it's like uh, three weeks. Sun. Oh damn. Yeah. So it's like quick style. Yeah, I leave on July 5th. Oh damn, dude, that's less than three weeks, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's like two. Yeah, I guess it is almost three. <laughs> 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 I'm bad. No, that's cool though, man. That's that's good stuff. You're out there, you know, handling it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And we're all proud of you. That's it. Well, Wesley, what, what was um, what stopped for? Our, I'll, I'll go to, um, but for our viewers or our, our listeners, rather, um, tell them a little bit about the story. I mean, how how did you end up losing the legs? 
Oh, I got blown up, man. <laughs> yeah, well, tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us a more, more well, what colorful version. Was, <laughs> what happened was... So no shit there it was. <laughs> In the shit with the grunts. <laughs> no, man, um, I was uh, coming back from a mission, and uh, it was on my third deployment, uh, a few months into it, and uh, it was the mission wasn't too bad. We only took like five or ten casualties, uh, wounded, not okay, so like five of them or something like that. So it was a nice mission. You know, we had a lot of success, and we're on our way back. And uh, I don't remember a lot of it. Uh, so this is a lot of stuff that people tell me. But there was an ID. that It was found, and maybe we made contact. And during that time, that's when uh, my vehicle got blown up. So Was it an ID that blew up the vehicle or yeah, I EFP? Was, or? No, it was a, uh, I was told there was three one two two rounds uh, dug uh, about eight feet underneath the ground. Uh, they were Whoa. dug at four feet, what they normally dig it on. Yeah, I'll, we were all been dead in the truck. That's but, uh, deep, man, yeah. for an yeah. ID. Like, yeah. I don't, that's crazy. That's commitment. Yeah. Someone's yeah. <laughs> so you said that's commitment. They had the new guys dig it. Yeah, well, yeah. but <laughs> the, the purpose was to uh, not get the, for the thing that, the, uh, what do you call that thing that uh, x rays the, the road? Oh, like one of the oh, route yeah. clearance, the yeah. jammers. Yeah, they got, yeah jammers so, so when, when they went through the road, they wouldn't detect it. So that was the purpose of that. It's like one of those Decepticon-looking vehicles. I, I, yeah. You see them like on, you, you see so it like on you, RCP. So were you gunning or were you driving? No, uh, uh, I was I was just sitting in the vehicle. So I was actually sitting behind the driver uh, and I blew up right underneath my seat. Uh, I took the left leg right off the bat and the right foot. Uh, the, actually, the right foot was gone. Uh, I was, was cut off, but it was still there because the boot was still there, but it was cut off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I uh, didn't notice the foot was gone until later on uh, when they were about to load me on the bird and somebody kicked it and I cussed the hell out of them. <laughs> oh, so you remember getting on the bird and everything? No. Oh, you just kind of like... I, I, I have a few memories here and there. Uh, like, for example, I remember uh, being immediately after the blast, having the wind knocked out of me, and I looked around and there was like a mangled something foot-looking thing behind me that I was laying on top of. And I recognized the boot because I just bought a new set of boots. And uh, man, that always happens. Like, that right? that right? Worst Teach timing you ever. Don't ever buy new boots. <laughs> yeah. Worst timing zone. ever, man. You know. And uh, yeah, I looked there and it was all destroyed. I'm like, oh man. So I, like, I just lay back. And uh, yeah, you know, man of experience. I thought I, I thought I was dead. So I was like, all right, this this ain't bad, you know. I just lay back and let it happen, you know. And then uh, I woke up. I do remember somebody knocking the foot, uh, touching the foot, because they were jumping from one side to the other. Because uh, I had my my hand was bleeding. This was just out of control. Uh, actually, my medic put a tourniquet while I was in the vehicle and was somewhat able to uh, control it, the left leg. And uh, then uh, some idiot from my uh, battalion touched the foot, and I screamed at him. And, like how? Uh, just- I mean, they were jumping from one side to the other on top right, of me like, because they were, you know, like yeah. in the heat of the moment. They right, were, right. They're mm-hmm. all uh, battalion uh, BSAs, oh, so right. or B, uh, BAS for the battalion A station. Right, right. So uh, mm-hmm. they were, you know, they were trying to save my life, you know. So I, there's nothing against them, you know. But good thing he touched it because the foot was gone, and right. that's how they noticed that the foot was gone. Mm. So they cut it up and they saw that it was gone, and they started the tourniquet. And the, it was all mangled up, so the right leg was all mangled up, too. It's part of the whole uh, initial assessment is to find out what limbs have been severed. Huh? I know. I was ju- I was ju- I was, that's what I was just thinking about. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure I learned that somewhere. <laughs> I, I, I've done a few medical courses, and that's always, yeah, like step two or three, you know, kind of yeah. figure out yeah. which limbs yeah. are gone. Yeah, the body, right? <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's like the first thing. You check for bleeding. Yeah. That's yeah. one of these. Check, uh, yeah, check, yeah, check. Stop yeah, the yeah. And, uh, and so for those for of shock. you that can't see, so you have a, you have a, what they call an AK and a BK, right? You have yes. one above the knee and one below the knee. Yes, the, the right. left leg was amputated right off, uh, right off the bat, uh, mm-hmm. above the knee or at the knee. Right. And uh, the right foot uh, was amputated also, which uh, they ended up cutting the, the rest of the calf all the way about four inches below the knee. So I have a below knee amputation on the right side. Mm-hmm. So which is your favorite? I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a give and take. I, I love that I have a knee on the right side, but it, it, it adds a lot of pressure onto it. Mm-hmm. So it, it's the most painful side. And my le- my above knee side is I don't have a knee there, and I have a, a lot less control. You know, I barely have any control over it, mm-hmm. but I have no pain there. He has so um, the 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 best thing you could you could hope for is joints. Really, they right. want to keep as many joints as possible. 
But if you can't keep a joint, uh, like a knee, especially if you're an arm guy, it's a elbow. Um, but he has um, his amputation for his is above the knee is is technically like a, what they call through the knee. So his he's bearing weight on the end of his femur where he's supposed to bear weight. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but on his on his BK side, he's bearing weight at like the thinnest part of his tibia and fibula. Right. So. Um, your 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 body's you know there's no ball at the end of it. It's not meant to right. the bone's not meant to support weight like that. So that's why he would have more pain on one than on the other. And that's the same injury that you have. You have an AKBK. Mine are a little different. Yeah. I but yeah yeah AKBK. I mean we we switch sides. Um, my right side's my above the knee, and it's about um, I don't know. It's 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 high as fuck. Yeah, it's about mid mid <laughs> midway down down the femur, and then um, my BK is is also unfortunately pretty short, but I still have the knee, which helps me out a lot. That's why I, I don't I don't walk um, I don't use prosthetics really at all, but uh, I do use I for walking. But I use a, a prosthetic on my below the knee to drive mm-hmm. and like get in and out of the car if I have to do anything on a ladder or something around the house and rock climb rock we've been, climbing we've yeah. been rock yeah. climbing yeah. for yeah, the last couple a, of months that's been yeah. an adventure to figure that out. I actually finally got the appointment yesterday with the VA. So um, and I know the the prosthetist guy that I talked to. Um, I was like I, I want to get a climbing foot. They make this one. And he was like, well, what do you need? And I was like, honestly, can you just, I've, I've rigged this one up. You want to just send it to me? And he's like, yeah, you, you know what you're doing. I'll just send it to you. And I was like, I have all my old parts, so they're going to send the new foot, that foot that's made for it. So yeah, that's do, good. I can do heel, hook, heel hooks and everything nice. like that. Yeah, because nice. we've been rigging up, uh, I think we've kind of cut up old climbing shoes or whatever and yeah. kind of played with the length on on your yeah, the length of the, from the distance between the knee and the, and the foot. So I think we got that dialed in. We'll yeah. play around with this. So if you think he's a beast in the gym... Like to watch this guy now, it, it, I'm going to give it to him. His fingers, Evan's fingers, Whoa. are about I, I don't know, like nine yeah. inches long. I, know, I think it's, I look at that. that. <laughs> Every time I shake your hand, you look. My hand next to yours looks like my that. son hand next to mine, dude. Well, like, well, that's not saying much, though, Chad. You're our fun size. So. I mean, I am. I am a little guy, but damn, it's, dude. I think it's actually yeah. a detriment when it comes. Yeah, to climbing I, I think. Yeah, with climbing, yeah. it might not be such a they, help. I, but. They've always been. My, my dad had the same problem and and passed it on to all all three sons, but. Uh, the, we have these hands that are they're, they're long fingers, but they're not super. Uh, I guess dexterous. De- de- dexter- you know? The dexterity, the, yeah, that dexterity is, is low. Good word. So, Good word. Um, yeah, uh-huh. grabbing onto things. Even <laughs> Do playing, I get a cookie? <laughs> yeah, we should. We should have a little a little candy jar in here. Every time I say, throw a word. skittle in his mouth, like. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but that, that that's awesome. So, uh, how your your injury, man? What happened? Uh, how did yours happen? Same basic story, really. I mean, I think it was that time frame. What oh five oh six. Uh, Really, when everything was just ID, ID, ID. I, I mean, I think I shot my rifle twice or three times on the second deployment. Um, but uh, yeah, I was a vehicle commander for a, a CAT platoon. I don't know if you guys have those. Um, What's it's combined anti armor team. So you have uh, what they call like, um, what do they call them? Uh, you have four machine gun trucks, basically, and you have four um, tow missile. Okay, trucks yeah. mounted on Humvees, and the the original design or idea was to go against armor, so the right. tow missile to, to hunt down tanks. And most of the tanks in the enemy arsenal are, are Soviet made T fifty five, sixty twos, seventy twos if they're lucky. Um, but they don't they can't shoot three miles, and the tow can shoot out from three miles. So you hope right. that you can get enough offset distance. And but anyways, uh, light skinned Humvees with tows on them. But the second deployment was all uh, in 05 that time or 04 when, when it started. Um, was all ID, so we're just patrolling. There's no tanks left anymore. You know, we we're just used for police force. So one day, just uh, doing a escorting a. There was a like a seven ton truck that had run over some mine or something and blown an axle. So we had to escort a. We were on. Um, my my acronyms are just floating out of my head today. It's okay. You were on a mission. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Dead time. Um, but yeah, we were escorting a, a, a tow truck out there to pick it up. And right. when we got out there, that's when the ID went off under the front right tire. So like running under the passenger seat there. And the uh, right one was gone. The above the knee one was gone immediately. And the left one was uh, just jacked up in a lot of places. So they had to end up cutting it off. Um, my eye also, I'm blind in my left or my right eye. Um, <laughs> one Check one, two. I think uh, we're not sure if that one was was the blaster because I would have been sitting with uh, my M4 kind of you know muzzle down in the mm-hmm. seat, so that could have even been the rifle coming up. Um, yeah, that's how I brought it up. Yeah, right. Yeah. So um, 
I, I actually do have memories. Um, I don't remember the actual blast, but I remember being worked on on the ground for the Doc, um, Doc Adams and my driver holding my head in his lap. They were asking me questions about home, asking me about my girlfriend at the time, my wife now. Um, uh, I remember the Hilo coming in. It was a Black Hawk from, it was the Army. They did the dust off for us, and they loaded me on that. And then the guy, the you know, flight surgeon or whatever, crew chief, I, don't, I doubt he was an officer, but he was like, hey, I remember him leaning over me. He's like, hey, we're gonna get, you're going to get home. We're going to be all right. And I remember... I watched a lot of movies, and I remember that was always what they said to the dude who then just died in the helicopter. <laughs> right, right. I, was, I remember that and being like, no. And it, I was in such Stay shock. Stay with like, me, man. Yeah, Don't yeah, tell right. me that. <laughs> I was in shock completely. So I, like, I, I remember saying, I was like, man, this sucks. I, mean, I was talking like I'm talking right now, just completely in shock. And uh, I landed to the base, uh, or to the FOB, and I remember hearing people calling my name, and they were taking me into the the tent and I remember doing a thumbs up with my right hand but I, I broke three of my the fingers uh, in my hand the metacarpals so I, I don't know what the I was like I thought like well, it'll be like Evil Knievel and like do a thumbs up <laughs> thing you know like from the stretcher hand me um, a cigarette <laughs> but yeah I, uh, then at, in the tent they you know I remember them cutting the clothes off it got really cold all of a sudden and then out for like three days woke up in Germany nice um, and that's when I really figured out exactly what had happened. Yeah. And uh, then to Bethesda Naval Hospital and then Brook Army Medical Center is where I did, in San Antonio is where I did my prosthetic stuff. All in all, it was about a year from... I got injured on January 1st, 2005, and I was hmm. uh, retired in March 2006, technically. So that was pretty much done by January 2006, but I had to... It took a long time to med board out of the out of the military. Isn't that amazing how it long it takes? Longer to get oh, yeah. when I when I said okay, I'm done with rehab. I'm ready to get out because that's pretty much how they let you do it. They're like you know you can you learn to run or like as high as you want to go as far as, as as much as you want to develop your skills. And then when you're ready, you can say you want to start your retirement process for medical retirement. And it took me longer from the from the time I've put in those papers to get out than it took me to start boot camp and get to combat. Yeah, that that that's <laughs> pathetic, yeah. man. I started uh, mine in August of '08, and didn't get out till May of '09. Now, now, in your experience, what what was the holdup on that? Is that just all red it was tape? All VA, yeah, it's it, all red. I mean, you got to go it's, get stamped in triplicate kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to go bounce back one and forth. Uh, you know, I had you got to go see every single doctor to get the final evaluation. Yeah. I had a psychiatrist or psychologist. I don't remember exactly which one he was, but tell me pretty much. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was like, you know, so they were doing the whole PTSD thing that was really starting to become a thing that they were worried about. And it's like, how do you feel? And I was like, I'm all right. Like, I, I really have been fortunate. I mean, I have nightmares, but probably as often as I had nightmares as a kid, they're just about combat now as opposed to right. monsters or something. Right. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'm not really, you know, I'm okay. Don't, and he's like, yeah, you have PTSD, totally. I was like, <laughs> all right, well, if you want to give me the extra percentage, I guess I'll, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with you. Um, but you're going through all that process. I actually... Um, they would keep me there, and they were starting to do all this. You, you guys probably have had to deal with it somewhat. I know, Chad, you've talked about it, but like they were starting to do this. Um, for us, it was Wounded Warrior Battalion. Yeah, the wound, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, like, in, a, so I was would, in a WTU. Right. That's what you were into, right? Warrior yeah. Transition That's unit. pretty much, yeah. But they, they, they would have us, and I'm talking, these are severely, Brook Army Medical Center was burns and uh, amputees, the amputees yeah. really. So, I mean, guys with, like, like you, they no noses anymore, just right. bad, bad yeah. burnt, things like that, and... They would have us like they're like okay you need to show up for formation at zero seven yeah that's and we were all like you know giving them the bird um, and they they kept doing that to me and I was like I'm done I'm, I'm, I'm done I've done all this stuff I have literally have no more appointments and that was like three more months I had to right. keep doing all that stuff so I would just take leave right I was like I'm gonna take leave and I'm gonna take leave I'm gonna take leave and uh, I ended up having to write a letter to my congressman basically because they kept they were like you need to come back and I was like what what am I coming back for there's nothing I'm ready to continue on with my life and do something new now. As opposed to show up for, you know, bullshit formations at seven o'clock in the morning. It's just because you still have that title. Yeah, they still you know that. 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 I, you know I get I mean? that it's part, like, but I was like, I'm like, done. Damn. I'm done. This no, thing exactly. Let I me got, go. I got a call back. I was flying back from one of my leaves that I took out here in Bakersfield, and I was at Phoenix, and I get a call from a, a colonel, 
And he's like, is this Corporal Morgan? I was like, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> he goes, I got your letter. He's like, you should be a writer. Uh, you can just go ahead and go back to Bakersfield. Uh, you don't have to come back here anymore, and we'll just process all your paperwork. Um, wow. I was like, all right. All right. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> that was a good letter. <laughs> <laughs> United Airlines. But, yeah, that was back a process, man, I tell you what. And then that's, I got into sports shortly after that. I got in here, and someone asked me to do a swim um, portion of a triathlon, and I got hooked. Just like Wesley said, again, I got, kind of got hooked. It was like doing something, and you could do it. You could like pass people with legs, or pass, you know, like yeah. be better than people. And it was like, all right, cool. Yeah, that's got to be that, like you said. It's got to be like an awesome confidence builder that you know me or Joe probably could never really understand that. That's amazing, man. I mean, that, that's really it is. Cool. It is. It's 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 huge because it does feel like um, if it's a great accomplishment. We we we, we put up a Wesley, especially uh, Wesley is a. I, watch him do some of the stuff i mean you've taken him on a hike uh, we see him fighting fires at things we've done before <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that it. Wasn't a i'm pretty sure he started that fire, yeah though, right <laughs> well wh- one know of know them he did the day before <laughs> a small one but uh yeah just running everywhere with these prosthetics and and uh, but still um there are like we were talking about before like just the weirdest little things that and and it, it affects your your confidence and your uh, I, you, like you, I can't mob my house because I'll eat. I'll eat shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. You go from being a you know young soldier, marine, whatever, killing machine. You know, kind of in your mind, you're like, uh, you know, I'm this. You know, I'm good to invincible. go. You feel real confident about yourself, invincible. And then, and then it's like, yeah, you. And especially right after you get injured, I mean, like you need help showering. Someone's got to empty your bedpan for you when you're in the mm-hmm. hospital. Like someone's a, a female nurse carrying out a pile of your crap. And you just have to like look at her and be like, sorry, I can't move kind of thing. So I have the that, beans. You, you, you go through, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you gave me the food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, after having a deal, like that's a low, I know at least for me that was low. Um, yeah. I, first time I went out, I was, I, my brother lived in D.C. at the time, worked for the State Department. And uh, he took me out to dinner when the nurses, this is still at Bethesda, before I'd done any prosthetic stuff. Um, they said it was okay, finally, like you can go out, you know. They took me to a restaurant with some family and I had to go take a leak and I was like okay I'm gonna go take a leak and I go and I roll to the bathroom and this was the first time I'd been confronted like first off I'm in a wheelchair and I'm getting uh, there's chairs and tables in the way so I'm having to figure that out I'm like okay whatever no big deal and I'm having to move things and go around that's the hard to do walking in a restaurant yeah, sometimes exactly, yeah. yeah and then I get to the bathroom and I'm confronted with this like oh shit how does this work like right you mm-hmm. know I'm in a wheelchair I don't have prosthetics at the time. I can't stand up. You know, I'm still actually kind of like bandaged a little bit. Right. And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm sitting down. How do I, you know, how am I going to make this work? And, and this was in Maryland, so I'm sure the restaurant was probably old, didn't have it, like, yeah, it ADA was, compliance. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a small space. Like uh, the, the um, I couldn't fit into the door for the stall for the, you know, like the actual toilet. And I cried. So I was just like, this is, I can't even take a leak in public, you know. Like how is this going to work for the rest of my life? And that was a, that was probably the low point for me, and after that, um, I guess that kind of like I had my cry, and then I was like, all right, well, you got to figure it out. So I, you know, and that's where I started doing all this like monkey climbing stuff is just you know find something to pull up onto and <laughs> and make it work, and uh, that's kind of been my approach since then. I guess um, is just improvise, adapt, and overcome, and so. Um, I know Wesley does the same exact thing, but yeah, it's always a trick to find something that can make you feel that that confidence boost too, because it is a different world. You're, the world is not as much as the um, com, you know ADA it, stuff is yeah. out there. It's still not really meant for. And, and it, even you know, even with me being on my prosthetics, you know, ninety percent of the day, it's still a lot of stuff that I gotta find a way to do. Right. You know, it's yeah. not that I can just oh, I'm just gonna do it the way you do. You it's know, not, I gotta yeah, they're find, not cyborg legs. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's 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 an adjustment, but you know it's the, the best part about having an amputation is that that for me that I found out that the free beer. Well, besides that, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that is a nice yeah. That is. Hey, Saturday, right, Chad? Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, uh, no. The, the the best part about it is that uh, I, I found that I have another opportunity at life, and I have a chance to do things again. And maybe I wasn't the best at what I were the hell I was doing before, but now I can do you know I can do things differently. It you know, is I have another opportunity. Definitely a a perspective changer for yeah. you know I think everybody, man and woman, but I know men talk about these things more. Oh, you know that moment where 
my perspective changed, like being a father or something, or you know, seeing a child for the first time. My priorities completely shifted. But I, I would agree that that you know, having to uh, you think a lot more about you know the things you can do. You, you don't take stuff for granted for sure. Yeah. I always tell my my kids. I always give them. My kids are going to have a hard time because they have some issue with their legs. Like, uh, but they'll they'll want r- ride on my wheelchair all the time, <laughs> and I let that slide while they're babies and stuff. Or like at Disneyland, you know, long walks. But it's like no, you should walk on your legs that you have, and right. you know you can just pick up and run across the street if you want to. Like yeah. that's something. Even even someone who's great on on prosthetics like Wesley, like it's not easy to just switch from walking to running if the lights changing when you're crossing the street. You know, it's some easy little thing that you can't really do anymore. Yeah, you can kind of hobble faster, but you can't just boom and peel right into running. You know, you can't just. Uh, you got to think ahead when you're doing something like a hike, you know, the extra feet you got to carry along. So there's definitely some limitations to it, but it changes the way you, you know, you, you feel like you, life's a little more special too after a big injury like that. Yeah. Well, yep. it, you know, I was, I was wounded twice before the, the main one, the big one. And, you know, yeah, it's just like crappy stuff, you know. Well, I don't call it being wounded. Uh, the Department of Defense decided to give me a purple heart for each of those crappy things, but... You know, just when the first one was just a scratch and a concussion, and the other one was just a piece of shrapnel in the back of the head and a concussion. You know, like nothing serious. Oh, but, that explains it. Yeah. All these concussions. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I got a shit little concussion. A broken instead of a light bulb, it's a broken light bulb. Yeah, was, a, a, a lot of explosions, man. Yeah, but uh, you know, we've been talking about doing that uh, dating site, that uh, tbimatch dot com. <laughs> have I met but you before? Yeah, have we I met, met you? before? Yeah, have we met before? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on the commercial. That cracked me up after you uh, said that the first time. I was like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Hey, so one of the things, um, so I've been out and done a lot of uh, physical type things with both of you. And one of the things I've been impressed is, is just that is is the, the way you have to adapt uh, to different things. So we've been out, um, we've been out camping a couple times. Um, and yeah, I've probably been a, a couple times with each of you. And uh, and to watch you, you know, like you, Evan, don't change your wheelchair or anything like that. But I watch you just kind of scale and hop around, uh, I, I don't know, obstacle to obstacle right, yeah. out in the middle of the wilderness. And you're just like, man, what's this guy's doing? And it's just amazing um, that I've never even once heard you say, hey, can someone help me do this? Now, I've seen people help you, but I've never seen you, even when we're carry, you know, coming into a building and carrying things. Um, you always have your lap loaded up, and yeah, it's uh, probably yeah. a fault at times, you know. But I, <laughs> yeah. I like to surround myself with friends like you guys um, that know just when to do it for me, because you know that I'm too yeah. stubborn to ask for it, kind of thing. So yeah, like sure. Know, guys and I surround myself and then with too. Wesley, you know, obviously he has the the sports and all that, but um, you know, Wesley and I we were on a backpacking trip last year. Yeah, that's uh, in fact, we got another one coming up, yeah. and and I, I'm excited about that. But last year, you know, we were in probably one of the roughest terrains I would think for for someone in your situation. So we had a lot of sand, um, and then combined with giant boulders that we were often going across. Yeah, and you had a trick, yeah, and and you had a, probably a fifty to sixty pound pack that you were carrying most of the time. Didn't yeah. he, did he so, break his legs? Didn't he break the prosthetics? Yes, we did. Uh, he did break the prosthetic. <laughs> yep. I think Bro- it was broke him. Um, yeah, the, the, the irresponsibility guy. on his part, I believe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. The prosthetic guy said it was the worst uh, feat uh, that he has seen. In his entire career, so they broke like at the end, right? Like, I'm oh no, they they they, they were busted the moment I, I put on the pack on because I mean I was weighing about two hundred pounds. Yeah, when you I exceeded started. the weight. They're all set up yeah. on weight categories. So. Yeah, and that, oh, yeah, that rock yeah. weighed about sixty pounds, and I the moment I put that rock on, I could feel those legs bending, and I knew they were broken <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> Damn, but but I remember. So there are times when we're probably uh, scaling over or. Uh, uh, kind of scrambling over these 15, maybe 20 foot boulders, and we all have these packs on. And you're looking at, and Wesley, he was actually leading the pack most of the time um, and, and kind of setting the pace for the group. And there were others in the group that were just kind of complaining the whole time, you know. Now, there were a lot of folks in the group that had different injuries and things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but, it, but I'll say, or in the Navy. Uh, <laughs> Come but on, but, I I, but I'll say that uh, you know he, he never complained, and then watch watching what he had to do at times, even taking the legs off, right. so he could scoot across on his uh, on his butt, and then and that was I know for a lot of the guys, 
um, it, it was inspirational because they were dealing with their own injuries. Yeah. And even I, you know, I've dealt with, you know, minor injuries, what I would call uh, broken ankles and things like that. And then kind of letting it get me down to say, I, I'm not going to do this anymore rather than just going out and finding something else uh, that I could do. And I, and I would say, you know, as much as um, I'm not going to rub your back and, uh you know, massage your feet or anything Why like not? that. But um, it, it is inspirational at times to, to watch you guys. And I know that, that you don't care about that and you don't want to ask people. But it, it should be inspirational in this, in that I talk to a lot of folks that give me every reason for not getting out there and doing something more than what they're doing with their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, we all have to overcome our thing, whatever that is. Yeah, you don't have the job that you have any had anymore. Um, maybe you're not going to go run a marathon anytime soon. Maybe never again. But there's something out there that you can adapt to, and um, and give your life meaning now. Because quite frankly, a lot of us veterans, we get stuck in the military where the best years of our lives, mm. and there will never be anything as good as that in the future. Yeah. And that, and that is a, de- and that's a debilitating mindset. That's a trap. For that's sure. a disability. And it know? sucks though, because we all think that way. I mean, I you know, that part it, of my drive, honestly, and I've, I've told my wife this before is especially like, I have no, I, I don't want to be for the rest of my life. And it, at times that's what I am. I mean, sometimes while well, I'm, Oh, you're, you're that veteran guy. Like, because in Bakersfield is always so great, um, you know, with their veterans and, and especially there's, there's only a few of us that are, that are amputees. Um, but, you know, I don't want to be defined by something for the rest of my life. I don't want my legacy to be something that a bad guy did to me. Like, you know, yeah. like, hey, I was driving in a vehicle and I got blown up. There were five other guys in that vehicle that could have just as easily lost their legs, yeah. but it happened to be me. I don't want that to be what defines me for the rest of my life. Like, it was something I had no control over. So that has been a drive that, like I said, you know, yeah, not getting, falling into that trap that you're never going to replace those four years or eight years or whatever. Um, Kind of like going back to uh, that picture of that Marine flipping the, after he got blown up. Right, yeah. yeah, kind of, kind of like that too. You know, it's kind of like, hey, Haji, you, you yeah, didn't get yeah, me. Yeah. These ain't the last of me. Yeah, so exactly, you know. And, and that's why you know, speaking about athletes and stuff, I'm going to kind of go in a different direction with it. Is that these athletes are paid millions and millions of dollars, man? I mean, living lavishly, having these like, ex- you know, lavish lifestyles, you know. And they, they work hard down. for it too, though. What's that? They work hard for it too. Oh, I know. Most I'm not of taking anyways. I'm a huge yeah. sports fan, but it's yeah. like you look at them, and it's like they get a heat cramp, and they need three dudes to carry them off. It's like <laughs> we, we. I mean, we look at that from from obviously from where you guys are coming from, and then you know me and Joe having seen buddies go through the same thing, you know, or less, you know, I mean, or equivalent, you know what I mean? And we look at that, and you're like, really? You know what I mean? So our mindset is a little different. Yeah, I think you know? for me though, that's a, like I. I loved in a just a say you got just some long hike you got to do and just folks are bailing out left and right and you pick up their pack and they're 240 and hike with you know two packs and a 240 and I ate that shit up. I mean oh, that, yeah. that's my yeah. that's my jam right there. I like and this is a bit vain but I liked being better like at that stuff than other people were and I like being able to embrace the suck. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I lo- yeah Oh yeah, my you know broke my finger. I'll keep whatever. Like just keep going. That's- one, one of my favorite things passing people on a ruck march was just smiling, and yeah. telling jokes and la- I right. could have been sucking, man. Yeah. But if I was passing someone, I would tell them a joke or something like that as I was going, and just just to make them feel defeated. Exactly. Like, Even I- worse. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> hey, you got you got the time. <laughs> I'm so short that like I, I would have to run. I mean, uh, yeah, so, because no, the yeah. pace yeah, would short be, legs have a, have a trick. It would be, it would, it would. I would hate it, man. And and especially being so small. Of course, when I first came in, they were like, "Here you go, meet the two forty or meet, you know, meet the saw." <laughs> I was a saw gunner for like forever, and it was like, "Damn it," you know. But no, I, I feel what you're saying. There, there's something about. So I like that. You know, I like seeing. At, I mean, I also understand that that an athlete is paid millions of dollars. But you, you know, you get paid more based on how few of you in the world there are, and at, at an elite level, you know. So. I understand. There's a lot more people that can just. And take. then there's an investment there. Yeah, you know, he got. Mm. He probably got carried off because the team, the coach, the team, probably there's like, an we need investment you for game there. Four yeah. or whatever, we just you paid know, you a hundred yeah. million dollars. You yeah. got to play the next yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You so know. I. Uh, it's a different beast in itself. But they we don't have tricare. Yeah. yeah, they don't got tricare. Yeah. <laughs> 
You're We're better. sending you to the VA. <laughs> do, you take, do, you, do you take TRICARE? No. Do you take TRICARE? No. There's definitely not some 19-year-old no. kid waiting to, you know, evaluate him as soon as he gets in the, you know, little aid station first, you know, medical uh, room. Stick a thermometer up his you butt. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 you got a heat stroke. Here's here's a, here's, oops, you're missing, yeah. a, you're missing that leg, too. Yeah. Here's a Motrin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're missing that leg. <laughs> oh, so my bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Hey, whose boots are these over here? Oh, whose feet are these over here? <laughs> yeah. It's just a different animal, though. I mean, you know, and but we do look at it like that. I mean, I'm a big yeah. football fan. Same way, man. Like, when they're laying on the field, and I'm like, come on, man, you're fine. Get up, you know? That's why I, I think that's why so many people in the military, I find more hockey fans in the military. I find more hockey fans of color in the military than anyone. Then this might sound like a worse move, but, like, in the civilian world, you don't see a lot of Gu- Guatemalan, right? You don't yeah, see a lot right. of Guatemalans, Guatemalans on the ice. Do they even like, have a hockey team, dude? To, no, no. <laughs> they don't, they don't, don't, we don't have ice. So you might, you should try out for their. Uh, but they do have a bobsled. So no you can, you can, I, I could, eight, I could safely say that I might be the best hockey uh, you, Guatemalan you're hockey player. You're, you're born in Guatemala. In the world. Yes, born, I was born. You're born in Guatemala. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one Guatemalan. Dude, so that should be like your backup plan. If you know, if you don't get picked for like the U.S. Paralympic team or whatever, go and see if the Guatemalans want one. You can put on exhibitions. Yeah. You could be like their LeBron James, man. You can. <laughs> no, that's funny. that's uh, funny though, man. Yeah. No, but uh, I mean, it, it is a different animal though. I, I keep saying that because it is. I mean, it. it our lot, you know, it's so much is the same, but so much is well, different. You do, but we, we we see the same things from people who've been playing. And then again, you see people who've been playing professional football for like five years and they can't move for the rest of their lives their well, bodies TBI. are blown yeah. out or they, or they have that we get that from 20 years of service you go you're retired as a whatever and you know, you know your knees are blown your shoulders are out your ankles anything from jumping is gone you know the first thing and I you learned, get 10% yeah yeah, the, yeah. yeah the first thing I learned going in going, going in the infantry was you, you look at like the old first sergeants and sergeant majors especially in the 82nd yeah. you'd look at them walking around uh, and they would have like this hobble just, just like they would have like this walk yeah. you know and they and it was like this posture's not quite right it's not it's something yeah, something got, was messed discs up discs fused together yeah, or, yeah. 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 I, I think that's one of the reasons uh, so many guys uh, when they when they first get out, they put on a ton of weight right away because they're all those things that they were kind of pushing through hurt. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't have to do or inj- yeah. injured, they're like, man, I, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. It hurt, and then and then they they put on a lot of weight. I know that I did and that then with they, running they hurt even more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did that with running, um, and that and that's just tough. You know, you, you see, it's, Slowing it's down. just tough not being able to do the thing, which happens to us anyway in age. Right, and then for those that. And here's, you know, so here's the danger for the guys that are still in the military. So they have these uh, commanders, right, that that probably did one one deployment as a as a first lieutenant, second lieutenant, oh, right. yeah, second lieutenant actually yeah. out on the line somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so and so, they the, so they went through, they didn't get injured. Yeah, S2 or something. Um, and they and they they maintain great physical fitness. And then I think it's harder for those guys to identify as the guys that are on their second, third, fourth, fifth deployment, that, man, they got some bumps and bruises that they don't want to go in and go to sick call. They don't want to end up yeah. in the yeah. warrior like transition exactly. battalion. Oh, yeah. Like, and you need them to stay, stay fit enough to fight, but you don't need them to go, like, you get those, we'd get guys, they were just like, we're going to stage a triathlon it, you know, in Iraq, but instead of like running or swimming and biking, because obviously we don't have that shit, sure. um, we're going to like carry a, Telephone 50 cal pole. somewhere or yeah like some other right. and you're like well this, you is, know. this is like the pro bowl like why am i gonna go do this event and <laughs> yeah. injure my take myself out of combat effectiveness and exactly just so like so, so you can, can make marine corps times with some photos right or something. exactly like, with that it gives silly the navy little, and air force some to do come yeah. on <laughs> that little silly little photo op that they get you know how they get stand it if there. you're on a ship and like you're not in like even th- those guys have a job to do Right. So you still run the same risk, and it's still just as stupid for that fact. But I mean, it's another thing when you have like you, your event could be interrupted by mortar fire or something at any moment. Like, yeah. Well, and I and I think those things are. are I think what they're really designed for. You know, you talk about like the turkey trots and they're all designed the for morale boosting. Yeah, obviously. morale boost. Hey, let's keep the let's keep them busy so they're not thinking about the fact that they're missing. Thanksgiving or Christmas and those kinds of things. The green bean's been down for a month, so let's just get something to boost morale, like on the fobs. (laughs) Green bean. Yeah, the green beans a coffee. You sound, uh, you, sir, you sound like a pug. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the green. So the green beans uh, like a coffee shop, like a Starbucks, oh, like a Supreme on, Bean or whatever. Yeah, yeah. On, on on Fobs. Yeah, I, I, at least they were in Afghanistan. I don't remember seeing a green bean ever. Yeah. in Iraq. Yeah, they had I don't, a, oh, coffee beans or something like that. I think yeah. how we define they Fobs. Are, actually, I heard I heard they built an actual chow hall because uh, my, my 
battalion went to the same place, Al Qaim, Al Qaim, like in 04. That's where I was injured, 04, 05. And then they went back after they went, they rotated back. And apparently there was like a chow hall where they had like the Pakistani guys working there or whatever kind of yeah. thing going on. Um, Scooping up the Baskin Robbins ice cream yeah, right there with little hats Robins on. Not, like, I, the only base I ever went to like that was Al Assad or, or Baghdad Air, Air, International Airport when we were there the, uh, in 03. Yeah, uh, yeah. They yeah, had like, a, they had, like Burger Can trailers and, and Pizza Hut trailers. Man, yeah, that was one of the thing. craziest things. I remember coming into the biop. And then that um, green zone was just ridiculous. Yeah, it was like and, and going into uh, one of Saddam's palaces that had been taken over by uh, our unit was now housing our unit. And I went into their chow hall, which was a former uh, like a ballroom, uh-huh. one of the ballrooms yeah. there on the palaces. And and there's these little uh, there's these guys from Pakistan there with like little bow ties on and uh, <laughs> they're in like, um, they're, or I, they were Indians or something. And they had a little bow ties and little uh, paper hats, and they're standing behind. Uh, this uh, Baskin Robbins <laughs> containers, and they're like, "Mister, you want ice cream?" And I'm like, "What? Where am I?" They had that number <laughs> one best Joe, ice cream. Joe, bro. they didn't have them the regular chahons. They, they had that bagram. Have- <laughs> Come on, there's all the OGAs they got to feed there. You know, like they expect their higher quality stuff. That was so funny. Yeah, they, they had that in Bagram and at Salerno. I, when I when you go when you're leaving on R and R, you'd see that. Yeah, yeah, cream. I've been to Salerno. They yeah. had a they, they had, had they had little ice cream. That was so, so funny, man. Well, hey guys, I did, this has been great, man. And you guys are two of the strongest, uh, strongest guys I know, man. And since coming back, you guys are definitely. What's up, man? What you got? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I just you know one of the things I, I want to leave, uh, and I always try to do this, leave with, with a message, and uh, is that yeah, you see us, uh, yeah, yeah, we got fucked up. Shit happens. You know, we, we, you know, it could have happened to any one of us, right? And uh, in life, we're all gonna get punched in the face and get knocked on our ass. That's fucking life. But it ain't about how you get hit or how hard you get hit or, you know, any of that trash. It's about how you get up and what you learn from those experiences. So in this, you know, this is how we try to live our lives. And I'm not trying to speak for Evan, but, you know, we're we're, we're doing okay. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely. motivator. Yeah, you know? I agree with I mean, that. I mean, I, I hate to use that word, but, you know, motivator is the word to use, I think. And moto. You know, it is uh, pretty moto. <laughs> Joe texted me cool this morning. But uh, but Joe, real quick about the hike. We talked a lot about the hike. We have a hike coming up. Uh, you know, you want to Yeah, we do. So if you're a veteran uh, in Kern County, California, we uh, will be taking our six-day backpacking expedition to I'll the minarets it. in the Sierras. Yep. Oh, nice. Chad That's Man nice. will be going. It's going to be great. Everything's provided. You just have to be a uh, veteran, a post-9-11 veteran, served on or after uh, 9-11-01 um, and we'll provide everything you bring your clothes and we'll provide the backpacks the food the water I mean you'll carry it all but we'll we'll, we'll provide it for you, you pack and there'll be about carry? 10 of us oh, going it'll be, mule class coming yeah up it'll, it'll be a great time for uh, to meet some other other veterans get out just kind of clear your head uh, and but I need you uh, if you're out there and you'd like to attend that trip with us I need you to give me a call at the Wounded Heroes Fund at 328-8600. So area code 661-328-8600. Or you can go on the website and register for that trip. Um, we have 10 slots available. We have about three left. Uh, and that's just thewoundedheroesfund.org. Or here on the podcast website, it'll get you there too, overwatchpodcast.com. Yeah, and guys, I'm going on it. Uh, Joe will be there. Um, a few other guys that we know out here. I, mean, I know there's some guys listening to the podcast. I mean, come locally. on, yeah, you get to do this. Wait, it's you miss, free, and it's free. Yeah, yeah. go, yeah. come on. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I was thinking how cool it would be to bring the GoPro out. Um, GoPro will be there. Yep, bring the GoPro out, obviously, and and do a uh, like a mock little podcast episode from out there. You know what I mean? That could be cool. I mean, I think that'd be kind of a little badass. I mean, I'll, you know, of course, I'll carry whatever I need to carry for that. So it'll know. be just like back in the military. Everybody will be carrying batteries. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. You know, and uh, it's it's definitely a tough uh, thing. You know, I got to do it last year with Joe and a whole bunch of other guys. And honestly, we're all of us, uh, we're still a bunch of close individuals. You know, we, t- uh, we see each other at least once a month. And uh, we talk to each other regularly. Uh, and you know it, it's a it's a great thing, and um, I'm happy I was pushed to do it, even though I was lied to. Nah, he wasn't lied. <laughs> See, Joe had said originally it was only going to be seven miles total. We ended up doing over what twenty some plus. We only did like, like seven thirty miles. miles. Now, now you guys it wasn't that much. Now, real quick, this is going to be. <laughs> but it was said, awesome. You said the end of August. 
beginning of September, correct? Yeah, so the dates are August 29th to September the 3rd. So it's still going to be warm, but it's going to be, I mean, you know. But I need to get everybody's information and get all the paperwork done by July 17th. Don't make me call you out by name, man, because I know you guys are out there. I know you, because you guys have been, you guys message us on the Facebook, you text message me. I I know you got out there listening, man. I know you don't got anything going on but school. I'm taking a week off of school for it. Let's go, guys. I mean, yeah, especially you guys that are going to the class where you meet once a week. You're making like three grand a month, going to class once a week. You get one miss per every five weeks, right? So I know um, you're out there, and I will call you out by name. I mean, I'll do that. I'll dime you. Yeah, it'll Don't be a good me. time. Besides, Wesley, uh, <laughs> Wesley repelled off a 23 story building a couple months ago to raise yeah. money for this. And so, so you basically have to. It's your duty as an American. That's right. There he is <laughs> out there. Uh, Wesley's out there outdoing us again. It's gonna be a lot of fun, guys. Really, man. Look into it, okay? And uh, you guys got anything left on this episode? No. Negative. No, Evan. All right, man. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot, man. It's been a good episode. Uh, join us next week. We uh, have no idea what we're doing. We'll do something, though. <laughs> All right. You'll find out. For Evan, for Joe, Wesley, thanks, brother. This is Chad right. Man out. Caw-caw! <laughs>